Okay, in this video, we start cutting apart the Mark V. Okay, so I'm gonna get back on this Mark V. I'm gonna try to get the pan taken out today. Uh, there's a few ways to go about this, so I wanna kinda run through which way we're going to head and what the other options are. So let's take a look. The three kind of ways you can go about this, as you've seen in the previous video, the rear uh, differential comes up and hits the bottom of the spare tire well on this vehicle. So one, one option obviously is to just cut this section out, which if you do some research online, you'll probably see that some guys have gone about doing it that way and just kind of weld in a box kind of up like this and over uh, to fill that in. Another option is to purchase the rear pan out of a, you know, Mark 5 R32 or a Golf R and, you know, take this whole rear pan out and put that in. I did consider that with this vehicle. Uh, I priced the pan out and looked at kind of the labor to put it in. Um, and because the pan itself is quite expensive, it gets to the point where it's not really that cost effective to go about that, especially for something that's never seen. This guy always has stereo gear and stuff in the trunk, um, a little bit anyway, so uh, you're not gonna see the inside and then obviously you're never gonna see the bottom of the pan either, so. The option I'm gonna go with, um, and I'll kinda show you in a second, is I'm gonna cut basically the whole spare tire well out and um, basically move that section up to get it to where we need it to for all the clearance that we need. Another option that I considered was cutting out the whole thing and just building and bead rolling a pan to put in there. It would look really good, but I think the option that we're gonna go with is gonna be the better route and gonna be a little bit more cost effective for this guy. So um, let's take a look at what we're gonna do here. So the reason this needs to be adjusted as much as I want it to be is um, if we just notched out this section, like I had mentioned, uh, we could get the rear differential up in place and the rear subframe and it wouldn't be an issue. I could also then build uh, the exhaust to come out through the center of the bumper, which uh, the client wants. Um, however, that's obviously going to be additional time putting that or building that uh, exhaust. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to remove this whole pan all the way to the back and we're gonna push it up and by doing so, that will give us the clearance needed to run a standard R32 rear exhaust, uh, which has the canister back here and the two center exhaust tips. So as I mentioned, the other option was to cut the whole spare tire well out and build a, a basically a flat pan uh, that would be bead rolled to get rid of this whole section. But the way that I'm thinking about doing it is I'm going to uh, grind out all these spot welds all along here, and then I'm gonna trim the pan up along here, all the way around, and then I'm gonna push this center pan up into place. Uh, obviously, it's gonna be tough to explain all this now, but as we get going through it, you'll be able to see what my plan of attack is. Uh, so now I'm gonna go ahead and remove the charcoal canister, uh, take out the lines, and uh, I'm gonna start grinding all this away and see if we can't get this pan out today. Uh, so the end goal really is to make it look as factory as we can without spending the top dollars on the pan that uh, would be required to make this exactly like an R32. So uh, we're going to get at it. I'm going to set the camera up so you can kind of see me hacking away at it. It's going to get super dusty so I don't know how the footage is going to turn out once I start grinding and stuff like that. But let's get to it. <laughs> So my plan here is to 
basically grind this off and expose the spot welds and drill these spot welds out around this. I'm going to push this all up as I mentioned up further but I'm going to utilize this and rebox it back in and attach it to the smaller uh, pan that's going to be in here so I'm going to grind all this out now. It may be a bit hard to see on camera here, but um, once you start grinding this off, you'll be able to see the spot welds. You can see one there, one there, one there, one there, and continues on. So I'm basically gonna grind these off so I can get them out without damaging the pan underneath it. And uh, actually in this case, it's not gonna matter because this section's gonna be gone. Either way, I wanna try to keep this as intact as I can. Uh, so I'm gonna get at that now. So because I'm going to be cutting this uh, and making this shorter, I mean, again, it's going to be hard for this all to make sense at this point, but you'll see as we go, um, this lower portion of this is not going to be needed. It's going to have to tape, taper up into the new section. Um, so I'm not too worried about ruining all this bottom flange or grinding too much metal off of this because, uh, again, that part of it's not going to be used. I'm just basically cutting this off or grinding this off so that I can free it up from this pan when I eventually come to take that out. It's not the right tool really to be using here, but it's all ground off, so. I just wanted to show you some of the fun that uh, we have to deal with in this specific vehicle. There's a bit of stereo gear in it. It's not too crazy, but obviously when you start tearing it apart, the wiring and all that stuff, as you can tell, becomes a bit of a mess. So yeah, what I need to do now is just pull the rear bumper skin off so we can get to the outside of the pan. Uh, so we're going to start tearing into that now. Okay, so I wanted to show you uh, some of the stuff I've gotten done. Most of it uh, was kind of unnecessary due to the stereo gear and stuff that's in here. Uh, but I wanted to just run through kind of what my plan of attack was again and uh, show you what we're dealing with now so you can kind of look back at it when we finish it up. So here you go. Okay, so I removed the bumper only because um, it will just make things easier when we're doing the final work. It's not totally necessary to remove, but to get out the spot welds and stuff that I'm doing and having to seam sealer and tidy everything up later, um, I removed it. Uh, so to remove the bumper, you need to remove both tail lights. You just go in through the side here. There's two bolts in the clip to pop the tail lights out and then the bumper itself, there's two bolts on the top on both sides and then two bolts underneath, just up underneath here, that bolt to this. And uh, there's a couple screws on the inside of the inner wheel well as well. So uh, that the bumper comes off. Um, and then on the inside, as you can see, I'm dealing with quite the mess of wires and stuff. And I just spent probably the last hour trying to dig out a bunch of dynamat and junk that's in here because of the stereo gear and some carpet that they kind of glued in there. So um, yeah, that's you know a bunch of unnecessary stuff for for what most people will be getting into but uh, for this one obviously it needed to happen so my plans are um, as I kind of mentioned from underneath is I'm going to drill out the uh, or actually grind out with this grinder here um, I'm gonna grind out the spot welds all along here um, all the way up to here on both sides and then I'm going to basically zip cut all the way around um, about an inch away from the top uh, all the way around and drop the pan out and then my plan is I'm going to essentially cut a band out of the pan um, a couple of inches and then weld this 
bottom piece back up in way up here and then what I'll eventually do is I'm going to take this hump off of this and I'll build a small center piece that I'll bead roll and weld back into this piece um, so again that it kind of looks very similar to the, the way it did from factory. As I kind of mentioned earlier with the R32 pan uh, there's quite a bit more spot welds and stuff that need to be drilled out on top of that the additional cost of the pan itself um, so if you actually take a look at pictures of the R32 or Golf R uh, rear floor pan it looks like there's a spare tire well it's essentially it's still a circle with some bead rolls and stuff like that it sits down about an inch or so um, compared to the rest of the floor pan uh, so my goal is to kind of mimic what they had in those vehicles in this just by kind of building it myself I don't know if you can see on the video, but uh, grinding through the spot welds, you can tell when they free up, these couple over here still are attached a little bit, but for the most part, they're coming off pretty easy. So you can probably see now uh, that I, I can move the rear pan away from the spare tire well. So that means I got all the spot welds free. I'll just straighten all that back out, dolly it back out once I get the pan out. Um, so yeah, now it's time to go underneath and kind of mark out where I want to cut this and uh, start cutting it. Clayton's come over with the good camera. We're going to start cutting this apart now so uh, I can get this out of here, finally. So let's get at it. <laughs> there we go. So, there's a hole now. So, what I'm going to do obviously is clean up all this. I'll uh, dolly up this and clean this all up. Uh, and then we're going to modify the pan, uh, as I mentioned earlier in the video. Um, another thing I forgot to mention that would be different with these pans is we're going to have to cut out uh, this pocket here to be similar like this, similar to this, uh, just for the Haldex controller and the wiring and the, uh, the pump on the other side. Yeah, so now we're going to uh, mock up and actually bolt up the rear subframe with the Haldex and everything in it just to kind of see what we got for clearance and to see if we need to do any more um, before we move on. So let's get to it. So since we have these here, I wanted to just go over the differences between the aluminum subframe and the steel subframes available for these cars. So as you can see, these are both all-wheel drive Haldex. They will both bolt into this vehicle. 
Um, one just happens to be aluminum opposed to steel. So the R32s, the Golf Rs, uh, they all had a uh, steel subframe, but the A3 came with an aluminum subframe in the rear. There might be the other odd vehicle that comes with that, so don't quote me on that, but I do know for sure that the A3 comes with the aluminum subframe. So if you happen to be doing one and you have the access to the A3, um, you're gonna save a little bit of weight in the rear end, but it's all the same stuff in the end. There we have it. The all-wheel drive is uh, up in place. It's bolted with the four subframe bolts. Uh, it looks like the line that I was talking about earlier that might need to be replaced, we might be able to actually use that. It might not be routed, or routed completely correct at this point, but uh, it looks like we're good. I did have to trim the, bra the piece of the bracing that was in the spare tire well that was up in here. I had to trim that out some more, so I'll be cleaning that up later on as, uh, as we start building the pan. Um, obviously, we'll come back through and clean up all these sharp metal edges and all that stuff. So we're going to put the car down and show you the inside and kind of show you the depth of it. So as you can tell, um, I haven't spent the extra time to disconnect these uh, amps or whatever the hell they are. Um, we'll work around them for now until they get really agitated. So as you can see, um, this does come up pretty high. So the spare tire well itself is going to be very shallow and it's going to be just like um, the Mark 6 or Mark 5 uh, all-wheel drive cars. So the plan is, is we're going to utilize the the spare tire well and just cut it and trim it up so that it's going to basically sit to around this height um, all the way to the back. Uh, one thing to mention is the subframe bolts that came out of this car originally they are not long enough to use with the all-wheel drive rear, diff or rear subframe so you need to use the actual longer uh, subframe bolts for the all-wheel drive car so uh, one just one thing that we noticed when we tried to bolt it back up the bolts weren't long enough. Uh, I had a set from another car that we just pulled apart, uh, so we just use those to get it up in place for now. Just kind of on that note, when you're if you're using a donor car or something like that, this is just kind of one of those points where to make sure to save all the nuts and bolts and the lines and everything that you're pulling off that car, because you're most likely, uh, there's a good chance that you're gonna need some of that stuff when starting to bolt it in the other car. I honestly thought the other bolts would fit, uh, they're just not long enough so this is a perfect case for that we had some anyways okay so as you guys would know this is just a temporary mock-up we still got to do the pan we still got to put the gas tank up in place and figure out all the lines um, but we just wanted to get this up in place to see clearance wise what we were working with Okay, so you've seen that I cut the, trimmed up the pan a little bit to get it to fit better in the rear of the car. Um, I've done some assessment and some mock-up fitting and I think we're going to have a little change of plans with this. Uh, so I'm going to show you what we're into here and show you what the next steps are. I had this uh, piece of cardboard in here just as a little extra space over the rear diff. Um, just to give us a little more clearance. And the rear pan, I'll pick up, put it in here. It's tough to do with one hand. You guys can watch me struggle a little bit. So I'm going to explain to you what my goal was and what we're going to do now. Obviously this huge hump in here looks 
silly. The plan was all along to cut this out and make a little piece for the center to make this flat. Um, I wanted to try to utilize the step down on the pan um, between the floor and the actual spare tire well. So the problem is there's a bit of taper to the, pan, the spare tire well. It's pretty much flat in the front where I originally looked and got the idea to do this. But on the sides and, and towards the back of the car, it kind of tapers down in more. And because it tapers in, it starts to make the, the piece not quite fit as well as I had hoped originally. So what I'm going to do now is um, I'm going to, you can see a body line here. I'm going to trim along the edge of this all the way around. And I'm going to build a new piece to fill this spare tire well in. My plans are we're going to do some bead rolling and I'm probably going to utilize these bracing um, to, to make the floor piece actually, to give it some strength in the floor piece. So um, that's kind of where we're at now. I know originally my, I had envisioned being able to reuse this piece, um, but it's just not going to look as good. I'm, I would have to dolly all this up too much and it would just start to lose the effect that I was hoping for. So we're going to build a piece. Um, it's probably going to take... Uh, maybe a little less time in the end actually because I would have had to build the piece for the center of this anyways and I think we're going to get a really good result. The plan of attack now, as I mentioned, is we're going to build a pan to fit into here. Uh, it's not just going to be a straight sheet of metal. Um, so what I've done is I just ran some tape to get a good lip. As you can see in here, there's a factory edge that drops down. I'm going to utilize that to butt weld uh, the new pan in place. So I just went ahead and trimmed up this all the way around to make it even. I'm going to just clean it up now with the angle grinder. and. Um, I got to trim up in here a little bit to clean that up. And once that's done, I'll start making a template so we can start building the, the floor pan, the new floor pan. Okay, so I first up, obviously I got disconnected all the wires, actually Clayton disconnected all the wires to get them out of my way so I could stop fighting with them. Uh, I got the template all drawn out and cut out and uh, so the next thing is to cut it out of metal and get it fitting in here. So let's get to it. Okay, so this is a few hours worth of work. I got it all cut out and fitted in. Um, obviously ran it through the bead roller, did a quick design on it to make it look a bit like factory. Punched all the holes out so we can plug weld it all, all the way around. Um, it fits nice. Obviously once it's all held down to be able to see it all fits good. Um, so the next thing is to just grind off where it's going to be plug welded and start tack, tack welding it all in there. Okay, so that's going to wrap it up for this video. Um, I'm just going to show you the inside here as uh, kind of from this angle again once it's all pushed down and seam sealed you'll get the gist once we get to that point but on that note uh, if you have any questions or comments ask them below and be sure to like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next video
that when this is moved up, that pan can just be cleaned up and re seam sealed underneath and uh, rocker guarded. So, or undercoated, sorry. Seam sealed. I'll fucking get the right word. I'm gonna leave a small piece connected back here so that when I try to get the front apart, I'm just talking to you, not the camera. <laughs> That's what I was kind of whispering. Oh my god, it's still attached there. 